Hey y'all, this is a new age job with you and I'm happy to be here. Um, a lot of things have been happening, but I don't really want to get into that. I'm really feeling the energy of this lunar eclipse and I'm in it. And I've been observing it just probably like you have been. But, knock on wood, I feel like all of my upheaval has already passed, and just in the recent past. So to actually sit in the energy without being completely perturbed or being pulled either here or there, I think um, that I should take advantage of this opportunity and share what it is that I'm intuiting to you guys. So, um, what catches me right away is Chiron in Aries sextile, Mars retrograde in Aquarius, and Pisces in, uh, Neptune in Pisces right in the middle of that. And I find that Chiron and Mars are in cahoots in regards through sifting through hundreds and thousands and thousands of years of identity. And it's literally sifting through like hundreds and thousands of years of time in order to retrieve a part of you that needs to come back alive in this time. Mm -hmm. Neptune in between Chiron and this Mars, you know, he's, he's right in between. I believe that he is literally, he or she is literally casting like this huge cloud of fog or like this huge separation or this veil between Mars and Chiron. And my, uh, Mars and Chiron, are, they're talking and, you know, they're getting information from one another, but on an intuitive level. Because the fog of Neptune is here as a good and a bad thing. Not a bad thing, not a completely good thing. The good thing is that it's protecting you from the traumas or reviewing the traumas that have occurred to you through the hundreds of thousands of years past. So it's kind of just like making things really foggy for you so that you can't really, so that your conscious mind doesn't pick up on what's being dug up, right? Um, that's a, it's a really long, deep process, and it's a very intricate process, and we don't want to come in between the work that's being done, okay? Now, Neptune in Pisces is a, such a thick fog, right? It is the veil itself, right? The high priestess is sits right in between the veil, the veil of the seen and unseen, the conscious and unconscious, the light and the dark, right? The manifest and the unmanifest. Did. Okay? And if you are exactly in tune, like intuitively, like if you cannot ignore the Neptune fog or you know, kind of just slide beneath the veil if you can't do that and just kind of follow your intuition and not get caught up on what this Neptune fog is trying to produce. Like, it's putting on a whole show. It's putting on sparkles and glitters and glamour. It's putting on all of these things. And if you just take, look for one second, you can get completely mesmerized and completely lose sight or track of what's really going on. This could be a good thing. This could be a bad thing. It really depends on who you are and where you are in your personal strength. Where you are, you know, in your time. I love coffee. I love coffee. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe that great spirits or great, um, yeah, great souls that are being dug up from the past, right? I think a lot of 
things are being sifted. And I think that we're going to lose a lot of people because this Mars retrograde sextile and Aquarius sextile, um, Chiron and Aries, right? This is sifting through again everyone because nobody is exempt so everybody is going through a sifting process you can say it's like judgment it's the judgment card and but it's not as it's happening right before us but it's not as dramatic as it seems or as it seems or as it's been told like we have all these bloody orangey moons we have all of these prophecies you know coming to play and we're and we're witnessing it but yet we're waiting for like total destruction, which destruction is happening. We're waiting for like this grand show, right? And some for some people, it's playing out beautifully with this Neptune energy. Okay, so judgment. So the the Mars and Aquarius energy retrograded with the sextile to the Chiron on Aries. It's, everyone is going through a judgment process. Everyone is going through a sifting process. Yeah, definitely a judgment. And by the time this energy is through with you, a lot of people will have not seen it through. A lot of people will, will no longer be existent, okay? Because there's so many of us and our and our souls and our energies have like split in so many ways and I, there's probably five there's probably like clones there's definitely clones there's like these spiritual clones like these one people like one person or one soul splits itself into like 20 and is inhabiting like 20 bodies and it's just taking up space and making you know wreaking havoc on reality so this authentic energy this authentic purge this regression into the past to deep 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 ancient past to come and pull it through this portal right a lot of our bodies are gonna freaking dissipate a lot of our bodies are just gonna dissipate disappear not make it through fall through i you know what i'm saying the means of in which way that's going to happen or how it's going to appear to us visually. I mean, I'm, there's a lot going on right now. And, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not that educated on world subjects. I don't even speak on them. Okay? I don't... I see them. I recognize them. I pray for them. I give. I do what I can on my own individual level. Okay? So, yes, we're seeing a lot of things you know, happening before us and these, you know, so there's a grand purge happening. There's a grand purge right now and great grand souls are going to be pulled through and they're going to be huge and it's going, they're going to be massive. Okay. Huh. Well, okay. Judgment, purge, Ancient souls. Getting to the root of the true, 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 true identity. Like getting all the way down to your roots. To the very beginning from when your root was even just became a root and sprouted. We're getting to that point and we're digging up that soul. That's a lot. I just said a lot right there. Um, so <laughs> for the collective, let's do a reading. Um, my child is outside on the deck and I have a screen door there and it's been open and closed and somehow something made it in here and it's flying around and it's really annoying but I can't do anything about it until someone opens the door again and it flies out. Um, So let's do a reading for the collective, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we talked about a lot of things. We talked about the Neptune fall. We talked about the uh, Chiron and Mars working together to pull an ancient um, personality through an ancient persona. Um, what can we do on our... What can we do on our behalf to better sustain this energy because the energy is already here so can we prepare for it i guess we can readjust 
So for those of us who feel like we need to readjust our energies to better compensate um, the flow of the universe right now, to better understand it, to, you know, allow it to do its work um, peacefully, you know what I mean? How can we help this energy along without becoming destructive or interruptive? Thank you, Holy Divine Spirit, for allowing me to um, house you and for allowing me to deliver these beautiful messages to the collective. I'm very grateful. I'm, in, I'm internally, eternally grateful, Heavenly Divine Spirit and love. Yes. Here we go. Yes. So this is, you know, this is the five of wands. And when you see the five of wands, you immediately think petty behavior, petty arguments, you know, just, you know, people bickering back and forth. This is also a great um, competitive card. It's very, um, it's fun, friendly competition. You know, this is how you sharpen your sword. This is how you sharpen your not your sword, your wand, your creativity, um, while kind of causing friction between yourself and another. And when that friction occurs, one is able to learn from the new energy that is appearing between the friction of you and this person's energy colliding and it's creating a new energy source. So we're learning from that. Okay. Um, if you, if there is this friction in your environment, if you keep bumping heads with other people or you feel like you're being challenged, you feel like you gotta like kind of get in the game because you, you know what I mean? You don't want to get rolled over or bulldozed over and you don't know what to do about that. I would say take a step back, take a couple steps back. And then if you can, you know, mentally or emotionally, spiritually, come back, regress, so that you can look back into the situation and get a better idea of what's happening, where exactly it's coming from, and how you manifested this into your reality, and how can you harness this energy that is being, you know, that is popping up, that is being populated at this time, right, this new energy that is springing up. How can you come back to the situation and positively turn your attitude so that you can gain from the momentum or the clatter or the energy and the fire that's being stirred up right now, okay? If you don't realize or recognize that, you know, this energy is here, like if you don't have any anxieties right now and you're just kind of cool, um... This is a great card to get your hands dirty, okay? Get some paints, get some crayons, um, go out in the garden, you know what I'm saying? Go write your name in the mud, go, you know, walk, go, go get yourself dirty, get in nature, get dirty, pick up the beautiful creative energy that nature has for you. So that just like literally get as dirty as you can in your environment, do something, right, connect with Mother Earth, and then take all of that dirty, creative energy back home with you and do something with it. Channel it, do something with it, create something. You might just surprise yourself. You might just surprise yourself, and you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. It's going to be, like, super fun, okay? So that's how we can help these energies along. Can we get some overall general advice for our peoples? <laughs> mm hmm That was a lot. All right, so I guess we're doing a bigger reading than what I thought. So I'm just going to lay these cards down. How many do I have? What was it? This is the Five of Wands. This is your creative energy. It's awesome. It's beautiful. Mm. Is that better, mi gente? First card out is the Queen of Wands. How perfect is that? All of this Leo fire energy here, all of these wands. 
okay? And the Queen of Wands is your perfect creator. The Queen of Wands, you know, Wands harbors the creative, maternal, action-oriented, making magic happen card energy, okay? The Queen of Wands is water and fire. It's like temperance. It's like it's the alchemy. It's creating something out of nothing. Taking one energy source with another energy source and mixing it together and creating something new. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Ooh, we have uh, the Ace of Cups. Look at this beautiful energy. I'm loving it. We have the Ace of Cups. Let's see, what else do we have here? The Four of Wands. Are you kidding me? How gorgeous. How gorgeous. Who's getting married? Hmm? Who's getting married? Okay. <laughs> Ten of Swords, this could definitely signify a marriage. I mean, one part of your life is completely ending. One part of your reality is completely ending, and you're moving on to a new chapter. One part of your, your, uh, your child self is re-emerging, okay? And you have to release an old persona, an old mask, an old costume in order for you to graduate forward into this new mature but childlike state of being that is more authentic to you. Perfect. Exactly. The Fool. New beginning. The Fool and the Ten of Swords ending a uh, full new beginning. Are you kidding me? All of this beautiful creative energy that's in your environment, you you must, you must tap into it and get busy and get distracted and get moving so that you can come into this new reality seamlessly. If you've been doing all of your spiritual work, if you've been working your butt off, if you've been doing what you need to do, right? Some of you may just be feeling that little bit of anxiety beneath the surface and you're not sure what to do with it. I just told you a couple of things, or, or I just gave you a few suggestions of what you can do with this energy to keep the um, momentum in flow, okay? So that this new spirit, so that this new soul can just appear gently, coolly, okay? Right? Gently and coolly. Our entire world and universe is in upheaval. You know what I'm saying? And the reality is, is that we do not all experience this reality equally. It's just the way it is. Okay? This time can be the most beautiful butterfly emerging, soul emerging, creative emerging um, opportunity and time, okay? It's definitely a time for a new way of self-expression and feeling about oneself and one's confidence and one's place in the world, okay, amongst the community. The Fool and the Ten of Swords above and the Ace of Cups and the Queen of Wands below it. Um, I think these, the Ace of Cups and the Queen of Wands are beautiful cards to have um, or beautiful energies to have um, beneath this huge transition, which in other cases can be extremely painful. For some, this could be in a very extremely painful time, right? With the Ace of Cups originally being reversed. You know, it might not feel as good as you anticipated, but perhaps you skipped some steps in your process. Perhaps you didn't, you know, you started working too late. Not to say that it's ever too late, but you know what I'm saying? So now that universe is coming through, doing the cleanup, it has to clean up some of the crap you left behind. And that's not always very comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's when the process can become extremely uncomfortable. 
Thank you, Heavenly Divine, Holy Spirit. Amen. I feel so blessed. Are you? Do you feel blessed? I hope you feel blessed. We're in a blessed time. And beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Can we get one more card to wrap this up? Oh, yes. Emperor, Aries, the identity, the raw power and identity will emerge and it will be the mo more powerful and potent and strong and in your face. Like you, you would never realize or understand what is about to emerge before you or within you. A deep, deep, deep power within you that's been... Hmm. Okay. Um, lots of um, fire energy, right? The, I, the Chiron in Aries is a very strong energy right now, okay? And the whole Leo Aquarius axis, right? This whole Leo, all of this Leo energy and this... Um, Sagittarius or even Aquarian, I would say, energy. Mm. God bless you, my fellow friends. I love you and I pray for you. And um, I would love for you to thrive during this time. Okay? Amen. Peace out.